Peter, it's great to have you on Talking Heads. It's good to be on. Thank you. Now, you've got a remarkable resume. Down through the years, what's been your toughest assignment? Well, there were two, probably. Uh, when I was a lad in Vietnam, I, it was a really tough assignment. It was an assignment, but only afterwards did I actually appreciate that. But the one I went into with my eyes open, uh, you know, uh, no stars in my eyes there, was CDF, Chief of the Defence Force. Tough assignment because there you're actually ordering people off to take risks on their country's behalf, knowing that some of them won't come home. Well, we can explore both those things a little sure. further as we go. What do you rate as your biggest strength? I hope I'm a people person. I hope I really empathise and identify with the people I work with. I, I hope that's the case. Uh, and I think it is. Uh, I think over the years that's been noted as something I'm good at. My weakness is I've actually got a pretty short fuse. I've managed to keep a, a real lid on, you know, flying off the handle, so to speak, over the years, but I know that, uh, you know, I'm, I've got an Irish tempo, which I've really always got to grab onto. Well, the military roots certainly run deep in your family. Let's see how. Whistle a tune of gladness. Well, I was a post-World War II kid born in Sydney with khaki in my veins. Grandfather on mum's side and my dad, both in the army. My father served through World War II and stayed on in the permanent army after the war, and he was a mighty guy. He's just a popular fellow, a professional soldier, warrant officer, no pushover, but just an all-round nice guy. Mum was a feisty woman. She grew up uh, initially in the country, then moved to the city. Uh, we adored her, and she ruled the roost at home. Sweet, sweet memories you gave me, you can't beat the memories you gave Amid the crowded life of the terraces, as recently as 20 years ago, Paddington still had a tough reputation. I lived here for 13 years uh, when I was a boy, and uh, that was my bedroom just there. Uh, it overlooks the Grand National, the pub directly across the road, and uh, this pub, uh, the public bar, the ladies' parlour, uh, we had a grandstand view there at closing time and instead of being asleep we'd be looking. And sometimes when the patrons came out there were a few roll goal stouches and not always just from the public bar. We went to the parish school, St Francis at Paddington, and it was a nun school in for the junior kids and it seemed to me it was an enormous place these days when I see it, it's quite small. Of course, education in those days uh, was of a piece. I mean, tough discipline, learning by rote, yet nonetheless, we got a good foundation in the three hours. This is St. Francis Church right alongside the school. Uh, I was training to be an altar boy here and I was doing all right on the Latin. I, was, uh, th I thought I was the next cab off the rank to be uh, a proper altar boy, but I was caught one day in the vestry by the parish priest uh, wearing his vestments and doing the mass in Latin to the vast amusement of the other trying the altar boys, so I got the sack. Well, having uh, finished at uh, primary school at St Francis, uh, Mum and Dad sent me out to Waverley College, a Christian Brothers school not far away, but a very big uh, high school. I did the leaving certificate twice in 63 and 64. In 63, I got a lousy pass, so I had to come back and do it again. I was immature and a bit lazy, and uh, I thank heavens that the Christian brothers uh, were able to get me through. Of course, uh, in going to the army, I went to the Royal Military College, Duntrain, to train to be an officer, and from the first day, I was under the gun, uh, unfit, uh, untidy, lazy and unpunctual. I mean, I had the lot. Once I've passed you, you take a pace to your rear and adjust your cap and do up your boot lace. Stop. Get yourself on the ball. Stop. When I graduated, I did some uh, early duty in Malaysia with an infantry battalion and then off to Vietnam as a reinforcement officer. I joined the 9th Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment on operations in Vietnam and this was the most exhilarating time of my life because it was dangerous yet very, very important for me to get it right. 
this one here is the Military Cross, which I was awarded for service in Vietnam. And it's interesting that uh, after I got it, I had to change from being a sort of a larrikin into a much more responsible and uh, upright uh, officer in, in that uh, the Army had expectations of me from that point on. It, it, it was the halo effect, if you like, but it changed my life. In 1975, I met this lady on a blind date, and it was Lynn, the, a wonderful woman, the love of my life, and I was smitten from the first moment. Well, I... Uh, uh, Rough Diamond got a bit polished on that day. Who would have thought when all your yeah. friends used to say to me, what's a nice girl like you doing with it, with this guy? Yeah, a hackneyed and question. I hope you had a smart answer. <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah. 32 years later. Yeah. There you go. From beautiful bride to mother-to-be. We had three sons, uh, Stephen, the eldest, Philip and David, and uh, they're now in their 20s, and being their dad is just one of the greatest things uh, I could ever experience. Mm -hmm. 